events have now been, you know, they've, they've come under heat because right now nobody's hosting any events. Everybody's observing social distancing. And ever since COVID-19 came into uh, Nigeria, Nigeria, a lot of us have been experiencing uh, some sort of withdrawal. Compounds, really, we all have to sit down at home. But what is the future for MCs, for events? Is it possible that we can take this online and make as much money as we used to make before this COVID-19 pandemic? Joining us to talk about this is Master of Ceremony and Public Speaker, Joyce Daniels. Hello, Joyce. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me today. Thank you very much for joining us. And then and I are going to be speaking to you about um, MCN you know, in this season. And exactly, let's start first by being asking you how this has affected you. Because there are many MCs in Nigeria or around the world who are currently, in a, you know, they are at a crossroad wondering what next. This, is hit, this has hit them real bad. And for some, some people are still in denial, thinking, OK, maybe in another one month, everything will return back to normal. How did this affect you? Well, I have been an MC for 13 years, so I cannot be compared with someone who has been an MC for two years. Okay. I have done such a great job, and so I have established my brand. I have made a lot of money. I have a lot of savings and investments. I want to state this so that the person who is listening, who has done it for two years, doesn't wonder how come I'm so relaxed. So my not having work and my not having work for maybe another one year, I'm all right, personally. But a lot have been hit. Of course, I have people who are coming to me for all sorts of trainings and coachings right now, for which I am charging fees. I also have organizations around the world who have asked me to compare online events. Yes, and they are paying, not as much as I was paid pre-COVID, mm -hmm. but I am earning. What am I saying? For some people right now, they are hit. That's the reality. And I always say to everyone when they say, oh, how long do you think? I say, prepare for another year. Just prepare for another year. It's, it's not a funny situation at all Good. for a lot of people. For me, I'm okay for now. Okay. Glad to hear that. So looking at, yeah. uh, at the current situation on ground now and uh, knowing that the profession uh, requires people to be together, that's what uh, it's expected of the, you know, the, the expectation of the profession. How, um, mm -hmm. you, you said something about having online events, um, hosting online events. And yeah. in Nigeria, we know that uh, we are still a growing society towards that uh, internet um acceptance totally you know so how has it been so far knowing that okay nigerians are not very open to this idea as uh the western world have gotten to how has it been for you being here have you been able to host events in nigeria online has it been possible for you the organized private sector in nigeria has a lot of multinational companies that are not nigerian okay. so some of the initiatives are not originated in Nigeria. So yes, there are events holding every single day. Some will call them conferences, some will call them meetings. Some of them still need somebody to direct the event. So yes, they are holding even now, and I am involved in a few of them. Some other events are coming up in the next few months, including award ceremonies. I'm telling you, the world is moving on. In the Nigerian space, yeah. we are still getting there. You know, sometimes we play catch up. The moment some Nigerian companies see what their counterparts, multinational counterparts are doing, they will pick up. So I'm saying to the MCs around who are listening, we will pick up with virtual events. How is it going to happen? Or how is it happening for some people? We'll gather in a room with 10 to 20 people, including the MC, the DJ, the keynote speaker, and maybe the guest artist. It's all done up with a nice backdrop, social distancing, put in, in, in context and all of that. And it's broadcast to over hundreds or even thousands of members or attendees for the event. It's happening. Mm. So have hope. Mm. Of course, it will catch on with time. But Nigerians, we do very well when we play catch up. The moment we catch up, out, we, we won't take over from the rest we of the We then do the you. most. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> let's look at um, how current MCs can start to rebrand and repackage themselves. So to let their okay. potential clients know that they're available for this. 
Some clients would not even t think of the possibility that this can happen. And we've known that yeah. sometimes in coaching or pushing yourself as an MC, you oftentimes yeah. or sometimes have to sell yourself to the client to let them know that this is what you do and this is what you can do. So how would you yes. advise MCs to be able to brand and package themselves to ensure that they, they, they notify their clients that they can offer these services online as well? Okay, branding for me function of knowledge and fulfilling your promise. So if you as the MC knows that you can have such an event and you can master it, then communicate it as plainly as so. Dear ma, dear sir, it's possible that we are able to host this event for you in this way because some clients may not be thinking about it. So how good are you with communication? If you don't know how to do corporate communication, that's one of the things you should be learning now, how to write letters, how to paragraph, how to use the right terms. That's what I would call repackaging, not necessarily changing your name and your logo. It is how you communicate. What is your corporate governance structure? Do you have your invoices? Do you have your receipts? Do you have your email channels of communication with the corporates because if those are the kind of people you want to reach out to. Do you even have the contact of the people you want to reach out to? Are you on LinkedIn? Because some of the people who will initiate these events are not on the gram, Instagram, I mean, where a lot of MCs are. They are on LinkedIn. Are you there? Is your profile done right? Are you attractive enough? What do you write on your LinkedIn page every day? That's the branding that I that I would be speaking to the MC about. You need to be attractive enough for the organization to know that they can trust you. Brand is about trust. So those are, be attractive to the kind of clients you want. Unfortunately, and I say this to many MCs when they come to me during my trainings or even on Instagram or private chats when they come, many of them, even by the way they write to me, the grammar is so bad, I will not pay you to work for me. Me, that is an MC that wants to help you. I no go pay you. So invest the time now in doing what people will be looking for post-COVID, which includes professionalism, because we're going to go back to the world in quotes. But they'll be looking for the people who can deliver, not just the people who have beautiful colors and logos. Very important. Whilst we're, we're waiting to... We're not waiting. We're catching up. You know, we're living life because the world is not waiting for anybody. But there are many yeah. people who have always, I'm sure you get messages, oh, I'd like you to mentor me. I'd like you to please be my mentor. So all these intending mentees, I'd like you to please share some words of advice because I'm sure that as they are hitting your DMs, you're hitting many MCs' DMs. And there's some, you've mentioned one reason why you would not respond to a DM, improper yes. use of grammar. What are some of the other things that would totally set you off when you see a message from an intending mentee? Unwillingness to learn. And I say this because I give more content for MCs in terms of training and capacity development more than any other MC in the African space. I, I put it out all there. Free. And some of them still come to me and ask me questions that I answered two posts ego like are you okay are you reading at all i just talked about how my clients and the first thing you're coming to ask me is ma please how can i manage clients and i go you're not even serious i won't even talk to you because the one who is serious has taken that information and has gone to use it so if you want us to be friends it's okay to come into my dm and say hi ma'am thank you so much i just want us to be friends don't come and ask me as it were a stupid question that i just answered that's one two there's a lot of free information. So when people come and say, oh my, I don't have money for trainings. If you will just Google how to introduce guests, you will see all manner of responses, how to X, Y, Z. There's almost everything that is free. So you must be learning, not just, you must be teachable and learning. I will not attend to people who are not learning, who are not applying themselves, no. I will attend to people who I see already making the effort and then I can help with a little more push. But to just come like that and say, no, ma, there's no money, so I don't know anything, I'll clap for you and send you on your way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Now, looking at, <laughs> looking at the, the industry, the MC in industry, a lot of people uh, feel that if you can talk, then yes. you are 
you can automatically be an MC. Mm. If you can engage people and they are interested in what you have to say, then you can automatically be an MC. So and now in Nigeria, it has been a, a certain uh, kind of tradition that if they get a comedian, he mm. also serves as the MC. Mm. So how uh, would you professionally do you know, differentiate this? Is it, um, it w w will all these things, will these rules apply? Can you say, okay, because you speak well, you can engage people, then you're qualified to be an MC? Because we see a lot of young people who come out and just say this is what they do because they probably hosted their house party <laughs> one time wow, with a couple of friends. Off? Wow. And, you know, <laughs> so what, what are, would you be able, is, is this something that can fly? Can this be a conversation? Can they say, I, I am an MC uh, out of these little experiences I have? Something. It's a conversation starter. Mm. <laughs> They can start there. Okay. It's a good function. You speak well, you communicate well, and you have some level of in, uh, it, prowess with interacting with people. That's a great start. To master the event, you need some skills and some technical know-how. So learn those so that you're not embarrassed. Because we see some people who have good command of grammar and all of that but don't know how to piece the event mm. together, don't know how to deal with downtimes. Downtime is when something should have been occurring, but there is a challenge. Say the speaker was supposed to come on and next minute, say he, he or she has gone to the bathroom. Yeah. So we have four minutes downtime and the person is blank like, what? What am I supposed to do? Yeah. You need to know what to do. Mm. And only command of grammar is not going to help you at that time. True, <laughs> true. What I personally call your bag of tricks, or the different games and activities that you can employ. Mm -hmm. Also, post-COVID, I'm, I'm imagining that a number of organizations will be, cost, will be trying to cost save or save cost. Yeah. So, yes. They would want an entertainer who can be MC and comedian in one, yeah. if possible. Yeah. Some people, not all, some people will throw professionalism to the wind just to save costs. True. That so I'm saying comedians now, mm -hmm. they should learn the art of directing events because you might be hired once, but if you mess up, it's not sustainable. They will not refer you. You will not referrals. So get get it right. Get the job done. And I, I do have a product for, for for comedians. I call it Stand Up to Stand Out. How to add to your the art of emceeing. So learn the art of directing the event. So that in addition to your comedy, in addition to your good speaking and interaction, you deliver, which is the brand. You fulfill your promise, and then you can get repeat business and make more money. Okay, speaking of money, money is very important. It's, we can't money. say that we, we're doing this job without remuneration. You're thinking of how much you're gaining. But some of the time, one of the factors that affect uh, how, much, how much you charge is sometimes how much you have in your account, and the fact that you know that if you don't take this money, the client would go to another MC and would take, you know, they would charge cheaper. There have been times when the client would come to you and tell you, oh, this is my budget. And you tell them, oh, I'm sorry, that's way beneath my budget. And then they say, oh, wow, Lagbaja already agreed to collect that budget. So it's fine if you don't want it, um, maybe it some other budget. time. Yeah. What would you say are some of your top tips when negotiating as an MC? Mm -hmm. Negotiation tip number one. When, before you get to the negotiation table, have nothing to lose. If you do have something to be ready to come to the point of agreement with your client quickly. So I do not believe in one size fits all. If they do not agree with your price, walk away. No, I, just like you said, I would check what's in your balance, what is in your account, check what uh, obligations you have coming up and don't let your ego or your pride rob you of your money. If you really need the money and you can't see where next it will come from, take it and be well. And then over deliver, let the client feel they owe you. Mm. That way they tend to come back. Even have better funds, they will increase your fees. There are different factors that come 
okay, like length of service. There are times when I can walk away from something because it's not just about ego. I'm trying to pass a message to say, I will not stoop this low. Some other times I walk away because I need the people I've trained to earn. I can't be struggling to collect what they are collecting when I'm asking for more. That's my personal responsibility as the queen of talk, as I have called myself, because I don't, how can I be taking the food from the people I'm saying, okay, train and come and collect food at the table now, have I? <laughs> so all factors will affect us. Remember, I also have trainings. I have books. I have, I have sessions that have nothing to do with my work on stage. So I say to MC, don't use me as your only yardstick. I say, if my voice is not collecting, I won't collect. You go hunger. I'm yeah. hungry. Collect your money. Nice one. <laughs> Sources of income, mm -hmm. try, try, try to get the best you can, but know that the whole, the entire world has been affected. So some people will not be looking for how to increase the budget. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that. So take it and be great. Now, in reaction to of, that, there could be yes. a concern that arises out of that. You know, sometimes you work with a client and mm -hmm. you do them a favor, but then that is not your price. That is not your rate. But later, they go and tell people, oh, call Joyce. Joyce did that job for me for so, so, so amount. And you know you did them a favor. And then they've pegged you within that rate. Sometimes the client yes. never sees you beyond that. They keep seeing you as that. How do you then make a statement to let them know that this is not your rate? This is not how much you usually charge. And you don't want, to, you don't want that reputation in the industry. So what, how do you combat that? You must have it in your invoice before the event at all. If your regular fee is, say, 300000 your invoice will state 300000 and you will write concession. Joyce Daniels accepted 100000 on this occasion because of X, Y, Z. Hmm. They will receive that invoice so that's why I said build of communication, right? So it's in your invoice. In the communication, in the discussion at the table, you also say, it, this is the reason why I'm accepting. And so I'm not expecting you to say this, that, and the other to your, to your, to your colleagues and friends. You can also say, in exchange for this fee that I am giving you, I want this, that, and the other. For example, you can say, I want to have my picture and my profile in the brochure of the event because I am giving you this discount. this discount because many times they forget to put the face and the and the profile of the MC in the event right and they also the forget MC. to give the MC food ah that happens a lot uh, <laughs> MC, <laughs> MC, MC, MC no, no the seafood chop that now, is standard. the most annoying one so standard that's why I put into my MC the fact I put up on my page recently eat before you go for your event simple you go. <laughs> simple <laughs> feed yourself uh, okay. But, your chest. but I, I feel that it should be part of your, your, your package, knowing that you are there to see the event through. You are practically the one controlling the event. So you can't be, you shouldn't be uh, forgotten or neglected when these things would, happen. Well, I, I would, let me deal with that. So in addition to writing it in your invoice, I think I've dealt with that about writing in your invoice and stating it clearly in black and white. Mm. As you build relationships, in fact, you don't even need to go too far to build relationships. You can find out who is welfare. Many committees have the person in charge of welfare yes. or the person who works with other vendors. So you, you make that verbal or written communication. Sometimes in my invoice, it is there. Joyce, Joyce Daniels is expecting hotel room, feeding, X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. you, it's, it's about communication. You should say what it is you really want. Don't be shy. Mm -hmm. I realize that sometimes we are afraid to ask because we don't want to look somehow. I'm not afraid to ask for food anymore. I don't make it seem like it's out of hunger. It is, we are there for seven hours sometimes mm -hmm. for a four hour event because you get there an hour and a half early and you leave an hour late, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can, if you can, sometimes you find somebody to go with you for free. Sometimes you need to give the person a stipend. Let that person take care of finding your lunch and keeping it or your dinner or breakfast, keeping it whilst you are working. I will not allow, ask you to eat whilst others are eating, except, of course, there is a feeding break. So let that your uh, personal assistant, friend, whatever it is, those are some other ways to deal with these things. 
as you go along also, you might get into an event like I do. Sometimes I get into the event, depending on who, where, what. It also depends on different factors, right? It depends on the event itself. There's some events you get in. The last thing on your mind is food because you're here to deliver over. Deliver. You want to kill them. <laughs> as what was Kata? You want to be the <laughs> war? So you walk into the event, you go introduce yourself to the people with audio visuals, the DJ and the caterers. Mm. Hello, nice to meet you. My name is Joyce Daniels. I'm going to be the MC here today. How are you doing? This is another please. Who is going to take care of my food today? And sometimes the cake. These are interactions and relationships. They'll say, oh, this person will deal with your food. What would you like to eat? And you say, oh, what do you have? Well, I have this, or that. Then if you can, if and only if you can hype them mm. during the event and say, we want to recognize all the vendors here, cater at this, oh, the DJ, you all are people. They will love you. Guess what? They will recommend you to tomorrow. Yes. Because you remember yes. to speak of them and they took care of you. It's about relationships. I will still say, don't have the mentality that you must be fed, especially if you have been paid. You can buy your own and bring it with you if you want to maintain some level of dignity. But as you build relationships, you get to a point where, I mean, for goodness sake, I, nobody invites me and doesn't prepare food for me anymore. Da. But there was a time. There was a time. Now we even eat in the VIP lounge and all of that. You grow in the business and it's excellence, professionalism, consistency that makes you grow. See, a little thing as having my email address, Joyce at JoyceDaniels.net in 2012, changed my earning game. Because you're like, ah, now, wow, she has her own personalized email. Wow. See, the fickle things that excite us have a website or a web page, not just a social media. Those are little things. They look at me wearing my t shirt with my name. Come on. Clients are watching. They just want these little extras. Share, share, you know. <laughs> so wow. to do it. This you is a very, brand. very, very robust conversation. We have totally enjoyed having you, Joyce. Thank you for all the Thank tips you. you've shared. And I, I would say that it was it was very refreshing to have this conversation with you. We look forward to having you again sometime. And I, we're hoping that as many people who are interested in MC and can hit you up on social media at Joyce Daniels. Right? I'm, I am Joyce Daniels.